Hey, what's up guys? This is John from the Reaper blog. We just reached 2,500 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So let's do some questions and answers. First question comes in from Ian Stewart on the working with external editors video. Hey John, if you're using the open item copies in, why do you subsequently use a save as in Rx? Don't you now have three versions of the file, original unaltered copy and Rx copy? Or is it just copying the media item and not the actual file? So here's what's happening. When you're opening a copy, uh, you're usually working on a smaller section of the full file. So it'll make a new file of just that section. That gets sent into Rx, and then you do your processing, and then you do a save as to now have a altered version of the same section of that file, and you bring it into Reaper and uh, insert it on a new take or replace. You could save over the original file. I like to have the original and the alter version just so I can change it later if I need to. Question two comes from Robin. Sometimes when I copy and paste items or move items, they don't 100% snap to the grid, even though it's enabled, but instead they were slightly moved before the grid bar. The thing is that they're not visible until you zoom all the way in, and sometimes it causes glitches or messes up transitions. I don't know what causes this, but when the snap is enabled and you edit zoomed out, it's impossible to do a little offset movement with the mouse. Do you have any idea where I might look? Sample rounding is one of the most technical things I've probably had to explain. Um, basically, sample rounding happens whenever the bars and beats grid doesn't align with the number of samples uh, for the same amount of time. And that's why you see the offset sometimes. So if we take this um, eighth note kick drum and copy it, I'm going to paste it and just hold down that button and paste a bunch of times. We zoom in at the start of this, you can see it actually pasted it early, not directly on the grid line. So why is that? It's because 85 uh, beats per minute doesn't divide well into a 48 kilohertz project. And I'll show you the math on this. So 85 divided by 60 gives us the number of beats per second. We divide that by the number of ticks in a quarter note, so 960. Gives us this number. Hit copy on that, type in our sample rate, 48,000, and divide it by the number we had before, so 35.29. So that doesn't fit into the grid. If we had a project tempo of 120, divide that by 60, uh, multiply that by 960, copy that, 48 kilohertz, and divide it by this number and 25. So it fits perfectly on the grid. So how will we correct it in this project? At 85 beats per minute, you open up the project uh, settings, and there's this option here, force project tempo time signature changes to occur on whole samples. Click that. That's not going to fix these things we've already pasted, but it will fix the new things. So I'm going to zoom in on that. You can see it's right on the grid. But the thing you need to notice with that is that the beats per minute is now not 85 exactly. It's just a little bit slightly different. Um, but it aligns with the sample grid, and we're not going to run into issues with that. This issue doesn't come up all that often. If you find yourself running into this issue, uh, check that box and that should solve it for you. Next question. Matthew Nash asks, is there any way of automating the vaster volume in Reaper? Yes, of course. Um, so I'm gonna show you in Reaper and a few other things that go along with that. All right, so to show the master track in the range view, go to view and master track. And uh, by default, it's going to show you your tempo map. So any tempo changes here are going to be visible uh, in this lane. And you can also click and drag to make tempo changes if you need to. Try to remember to do it on the bar lines for the best results. Now to get to the master volume, click on the envelope button and choose volume. There's also a pre effects volume that you can automate. 
In this project, there's two loops. The bass and the drums are going into a bus compressor. It's right here and a brick wall limiter on the master. There's also a reverb for the drums. And uh, here's how that sounds. So if we want to put in a fade out on this song, we want the whole song to fade out. We can just do a fade out like we normally would on any item. And let's hear how that sounds. One thing you might have noticed is that the reverb didn't get pulled down at the same time. So we're reducing the amount of volume going into that reverb. We're also reducing the amount that's going to the bus compressor. So we're not really achieving a proper fade out. So let's undo that and we'll just um, automate the master fader. So I'm gonna make a selection and hold shift and drag it down. So here is the master fader here um, being automated. So the ratio of, of uh, reverb never changes. The effect of the compressor never changes because we're always hitting the uh, input at the same volume. The pre-effects volume envelope is the same as taking every one of your tracks and pulling them down by an equal amount. In a more complex project where you might have like things hitting your compressor really hard only at certain times in the song, um, that could be a, a good way of managing that without automating the compressor or uh, compromising on the sound. You could also look at the global effects modes. So like you can set the entire project to latch mode. And when you're done, remember to set it to read mode. And um, those changes have been uh, written. All right, so that's it for the master fader. And uh, let's go to the next question. Question four comes in from Joe Scaletta. What are some ways I can copy and paste effects to multiple tracks? There's a lot of different ways you can do this, and um, it's up to you what you find is the most appropriate method for your workflow or that situation. If you open up an effects chain, you can highlight them, copy, go to your other track, hit paste. There's also the SWS copy effects chain from selected track and paste to selected track commands. When I saw you ask this question, I had to try it out. I put those buttons into a toolbar beside the mixer and it's actually improved my workflow quite a bit. So um, thanks for asking the question because it's improved my workflow and I hope I've cleared things up for you there. All right, so fifth question from Eduardo Patricio. 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 Eduardo Patricio or Patricio, something like that. What about not discussing pre-releases anywhere else but in the forum? And there's some rules to discussing pre-releases. Number one, do not redistribute anything from this website. Number two, use versions from here with caution and at your own risk. Number three, do not link to this website or anything on it from anywhere. And number four, please discuss only in the pre-release forum. So these are the rules on the, the site where you download the betas and not official versions of Reaper. And to be honest, I don't really care. I know I'm not supposed to. You guys want to see the version five stuff. Kakos is not going to do any marketing. They don't do any social media. I'm the one running the Facebook page. I'm the one making videos and putting them out there, teaching people, you know, I'm testing out Reaper on my own system. I'm making the videos in Reaper. You know, I can't keep up with the stuff if I'm not using it myself. The stuff that I want to talk about is the stuff that I'm most excited about, and that's the Reaper 5 stuff. Uh, I can't wait who knows how long before it's released. I don't think there's any point in it. It's not a private beta. I'm not under contract. They're not paying me to do their social media stuff, anything like that. So I'm gonna keep talking about Reaper 5 stuff 
And if that's wrong, then they can contact me. I'm easy to get a hold of. And uh, then I'll stop. Only if they ask, not before. All right, so that's five questions. And we'll do another one of these when we get to 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I also want to tell you that there's a tip jar on the website. So if you like what I'm doing, find these videos useful, you can send me a tip. And there's also an email newsletter, which uh, comes out every month. Sometime in the future, I'm going to start doing exclusive stuff for that and uh, different stuff that's then what's on the YouTube channel and what's on the blog. Uh, I don't know what or when, but that's the plan. Oh yeah, and if you have questions that you'd like to see answered on another Q&A video, then you can ask them below or you can email me or yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and I'll see you guys soon.